Well, let me, uh, let, let me just reinforce the missions banquet. Missions banquet's going to be uh, in a couple of weeks. It's $5 for a ticket per person. I, uh, if you have a large family, I think it's $25 for the whole family. So $20, $20 for the whole family. It's $5 per person, correct? And it's Taste of the Nation. So there's going to be food from all kinds of parts of the world. And it'll be a great experience. Uh, we have a great speaker coming. Uh, I mean, a great speaker coming for the banquet and for Sunday morning. Uh, you will be blessed uh, when, uh, when you come and become a part of missions. And we want to be a part of missions. There are so many great things that we can do, need to do, and we ask you to be a part of it. Now this morning, this morning we've come to pray for miracles. We've talked about faith. We've talked about believing and what they mean and what their purpose is in the life of a believer. In, uh, in the New Living Translation, it defines faith, and it, it says this, faith is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we can't see it up ahead. <laughs> That's faith. That being certain of what you're, you've come this morning, and there are many of you that come, and, and this morning we're going to take communion before we ever pray for the sick. And I've asked those this morning to come and pray. They're going to line up here at the end of this message, and then I'm going to ask you to come. And I don't know what your need is, but you know what your need is. The, the message series is on dare. Dare means to be courageous, bold. I, I'm, I'm fearless. And when you come this morning in faith, you, you come in the boldness, in the faith believing, I'm certain inside of myself that what God has promised out of His Word is mine to have. I can't see it, but I believe it. Because I believe in Him, I don't believe about him. There are a lot of people in the world that know there's a, a Jesus, know there's a God, but many of them don't know God. What I'm praying this morning is that when you come down to be prayed for, when you come down to ask God to touch your life, that you know him. And how do you know him? You know him by, your, by his word by who he declares himself to be. The Bible says God cannot lie. He cannot lie. He, he is not, he's not a liar. Everything that's in this word is yes and amen, confirmed, confirmed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The fact that God said, I love the world so much that I'll give my son that my son may save the world from all of its sins is the truth because God gave him. So I, I come to challenge you this morning, challenge you in your faith to believe for the miracle that you want in your life. Book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, for without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it's impossible to enter into the promises of all that that He wants to do in your life. In, in other words, Faith is the door that opens the miraculous for your life. It's not, I hope so, or I think so, but I believe so. I have faith that God is able to heal my body, to change my financial situation, to change what's happening in my life spiritually. To believe God to repair every area of my life that needs repair. So I, I want to set the table this morning for you to experience your life what seems to be absolutely impossible in the natural. But by God's, by faith in God, I make it a reality. Now turn with me this morning, you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 11, I think otherwise it will be right up here. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 12. 
Here's what it says. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive his, in his inheritance, obeyed and went. Even though he did not know where he was going, by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, I mean, when you get to be 99, that's probably a little late to be a father. But by faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, Sarah herself was barren, was unable to become a father. She was 90, by the way. Was unable to become a father because he considered himself to be faithful, considered him to be faithful, who made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. Just one man who would believe. Father, I pray for this word this morning because I know you want to do miracles in this place today. There are those that came expecting you to heal them. There's some that came this morning to experience the greatest miracle they'll ever have in their life. That is for you, Jesus, to come and save them. Forgive them. And give them a promise of eternal life. I pray right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you begin, as Pastor Benji said, to stir the waters in preparation for the healings, the miracles that are going to take place in this house. Lord of Abraham could believe you. And even though he didn't know where he was going, he obediently went. And though he knew he was way beyond the age of having a fathering a child, Sarah's wife, way beyond the age of being able to have a baby. Yet he believed that what you told him was truth. And he became a father of nations, father of a people more numerous than all the stars in the sky, more numerous than all the sand on the seashore. So, Lord, I pray ignite that faith within us today to believe that. And I'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The same God that was able to lead Abraham to a land he didn't know. He didn't know. Had no idea where he was going. Just packed up everything. God said, pack it up. He packed it up. God completed his promise in his life to give him a land, a promised land, that one day his people would enter into. He comes with that same promise to you today. I don't, I don't know what's happening in your life, but I do know that if God made you a promise, he'll keep it because he's faithful. Matthew 9, 29, Jesus said these words. He said, according to your faith, will it be done to you? I was going to have a, uh, a picture that was put up on the screen, but couldn't get it done off of a phone, but one of the young ladies, oh, it is there, there it is. Oh, turn the lights down. Can you do that now? Then I'll make you turn them back up, but turn them down. The young lady from, from Lima, Ohio, who's coming to be a student at SUM this fall, was at the Mardi Gras celebration uh, that they had down in Mardi Gras, and she has been troubled with pain, had, as I understand it, a couple surgeries on her neck. As you can see, the, the, her neck 
to the left. These are the x-rays of her neck. And in pain, I remember when she visited us, that she had to get up several times. We were having a meal together, and she had to just get up because she's in so much pain. And a miracle took place. If you can look at the picture at the right, there's her neck at the left. There's her neck after God healed her and put curvature back into her spine. Totally pain-free. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Hallelujah. She, she, went, she went to a chiropractor and, and what, come here, Jordan. You, you can, he knows the story better than I do. T tell, him, tell him what the chiropractor said. Do you remember? Yeah, I think it was like 161% uh, recurvature. So like the, the amount of curve was 161% more than what she had. So uh, before she had a completely straight, straight neck, uh, and so she couldn't really sit down or stand or really walk around for long periods of time. She'd have to stop and do something different. And even the 17-hour the bus ride down was pretty painful for her. So, um, but according to the chiropractors, they have no idea how that could possibly be done. He said that he was afraid to work on her because he didn't even know where to start uh, before. So with that picture, he said, I don't even know how to, how to fix that. Like, how do we even start? And so, well, and, and, he didn't have to. And was she being prayed for when, when this happened? To be honest, uh, there were a lot of people being prayed for during that service. Uh, just about everybody in the audience was being prayed for, and it was a crazy worship setting. I don't even know where she was at. She came up to me after service and was like crying, mascara all over the place. And I was like, you should have known better to even have mascara on. But, you know, um, she just came up and was like, God healed me. God healed me. Like, you wouldn't even believe. And I was like, well, I would believe it because, I mean, it happens. It's, it's what our God does. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, listen, if God can do that, for her, then God can do it for you. Amen? Amen. You, you need to get ready to receive that. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is till the soil this morning so when God comes to plant the seed of that miracle into your life, that it begin to bear fruit. It comes forth as a miracle. Now, several things are going to happen today. Several things. Four things I'm going to tell you what are going to happen, and then I'll give you my four points. Four things are going to happen today. One, you're going to see miracles today. <laughs> secondly, secondly, you're going to grow spiritually today because of the miracles that God is going to bring into your life to just stir up that which has been dead. And you're going to come to believe that what God said is true. Third thing that's going to happen today is Satan's going to come and he's going to try to mess you up. He's going to come and try to distract you. He's going to come and tell you that's not possible. He's going to say it won't happen for you. And the fourth thing is when God heals you, you're going to experience joy beyond joy. So if you wore mascara today, you've got a problem. <laughs> now, now, let me take you to one of the, the most famous of miracles that Jesus Christ ever performed. All four Gospels include this miracle. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Maybe you've guessed what it is. But we find Jesus Christ, he's uh, out in the Judean hills, the Bible says he comes in from a boat and he sees people, crowds of people, waiting for Jesus to show up. Here's what it says in Mark chapter 6, starting at verse 34. It says, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them things. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already late. 
send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy something to eat. But see, this is how miracles happen right here. But Jesus answered them and says, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take eight months of a man's wages. Are we going to go and spend that much money on bread and give that to them to eat? Now, here's what I want you to understand today. Do not put limits on what you want to believe God to do in your life. Because God can do anything. Let me, let me give you more of the story. Look at verse 38. Then Jesus said, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. In other words, go check out the crowd, and let's find out how much food there is in the crowd. When they found out, they said, we've got five loaves and we've got two fishes. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the grass. And so they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, Jesus gave thanks and he broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces of bread and fish. And the number of men that had eaten that day was 5,000 men. Doesn't include the women. Doesn't include the kids. In other words, Jesus took five loaves, two fishes, put it into the hands of his disciples, and it multiplied and it fed thousands and thousands of people. Now let me give you four points this morning that I want to prepare you for the miracle that God is going to bring into your life. I didn't say might bring into your life. I said the miracle that God is going to bring into your life. And you need to believe that. You need to believe that. Because there are people in this house that need a miracle. Virgil Huber came up. Many of us know Deb Huber. And Deb Huber, they found several tumors, malignant tumors in her lung. And uh, she needs a miracle. I told Virgil, I said, you need to come and stand in her place, and we're going to believe that God's going to take every, every tumor, malignant tumor, out of that body in the name of Jesus Christ, and she's going to walk in total healing and wholeness. Amen? Let me give you four things. Number one, number one, you need to admit, you need to admit, that you have a bigger problem, that, that your problem is bigger than you. You need to admit that your problem is bigger than you. You need to admit that your problem is bigger than you. If you don't have a problem that's bigger than you, then you don't need a miracle. Three things that will happen when most of us are faced with an impossible problem in our life. Number one, if you're like me, you procrastinate. Well, if you're a man, I'll just put us in that category. Men, it'll get better. It'll go away. I don't know if any other men in the house agree with me or not, or maybe I'm the only one. But I always think it's going to get better. I... I um, and I, 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 pray, I, pray, I pray about things. I, I, uh, I was just talking to Shannon and Jerome the other day. There's a little spot up in his forehead. And I, I still have an indentation there where I got one of these little skin tumors. And it just kept growing and kept growing and scabbed up and got bigger and bigger. But I, every, every time I thought of it, I'd put my finger up there and I'd, I'd say, in the name of Jesus, I, I pray that this be healed. And I know it's a little thing. It doesn't amount to too much, but amounted enough to indent my forehead. But I kept praying that, and, and, and one day, all at once, I'm sitting at my desk in my office, and a scab comes rolling down the front of my shirt. And that, that tumor, totally gone, never been back, never will. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, that's just a, that, that's just, that's just a, that's just a little miracle. 
But see, God's a God of miracles. God, God is a God who will do miracles in your life. He'll change circumstances, situations if you pray about it. But don't procrastinate. Don't, don't just think it'll go away. Or, 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 or maybe you're like others that it's somebody else's fault that this thing is in my life. No, we're, we all, we all have control over our life and situations. It, it's like this morning Faith said, there's a, there's a point when you're in the box that you have to step out. There's a point where you say, whatever is putting me in this box, whatever is sheltering me in this place and keeping me away from what God wants to do in my life, then I need to have the faith to step out of that box so God can do a miracle in my life, change who I am, change my circumstances, change what is going on in me. And then there are others who just get fearful. Fearful, fearful, somewhat like the disciples who when Jesus said, listen, uh, find, find something to eat. They said, Lord, when we look at the crowd, it's going to take eight months of wages just to have enough food to feed them. How are we ever going to do that? Where are we going to get all that money? How, you, know, you know what happens in our life, and some of you need financial miracles. And you're looking at bills, and they got big zeros. And you're saying, how am I ever going to get out of this situation? I want you to believe today that God is more than able to change the situation, whatever it is in your life. And he wants you to look at your circumstance, look at your situation, and admit this morning, I cannot solve this thing on my own. But I'm going to trust God. I'm going I'm to allow God to stretch my faith today to do what, what is not physically, I am not physically, I'm not I'm not able financially to pay this bill. Spiritually impossible. I'm not where I ought to be in my own life. But I want you to believe that God is ready to bring you a miracle. The book of Matthew chapter 9, starting at verse 27, it says, when, as Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, have mercy on us, son of David. And he just kept walking into the house. When he got indoors, didn't matter to the blind men, they were going to get healed. They were going to have God do a miracle in their life. He said when he went indoors, they went indoors, and the blind men came to him and asked them, and he asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they replied, yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes and he said to them, according to your faith, will it be done to you. I say the same to you today, that one a miracle. According to your faith, will it be done to you today. And their sight was instantly restored. Second thing is this. Number one, you admit that you've got a problem bigger than you are. Secondly, you surrender everything. When God is about to do a miracle in your life, he's going to ask you, what do you have? When he said to the disciples, what do you have? Go and see. They came back and said, we have five loaves. We have two fish. I'm going to ask you what you have. What do you have? Your heart. Your soul. Your past. Your present. Your future. Whatever it is, you'll lay it all at the feet of Jesus, say, here it is. I want a miracle. I need a miracle. When the women, woman that, that came out of prostitution, Jesus saved the woman. And she came that, that day when Jesus is sitting in that house. She takes that jar of perfume worth a, a, a year's wages, everything she had, especially everything of value. And she breaks it at the feet of Jesus Christ. She gave everything. Let me assure you, if you need a miracle today, long before you ever came, come to him and ask him for the miracle that you want in your life, he already knows your need. Let me assure you one other thing. He already has a plan 
for the miracle that he wants to bring into your life. Somebody didn't catch that. He already knows your need, and he already has a plan for your miracle. Write this down. Long before you even had the problem, long before you ever had the problem, God was working a solution. You have to believe that. Otherwise, you're going to live in whatever circumstance, situation you're in. You'll be there forever until you're willing to come to the place to say, God, I am giving you everything. I'm surrendering all. I'm laying heart, soul, spirit, everything I have, my past, my present, my future, I'm laying it at your feet because today I want you to do a miracle in my life. Number three, you turn it all over to Jesus. You look at this, it was a little boy. And I, I'm, I'm sure, and I'm just reading into it, but I, I, can, I can feel pretty sure that when the disciples went out and checked to see if there was any food amongst 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 people, more than just a little boy had food. But apparently it was only the little boy that was willing to give it up. Five loaves and two fish that Mama had probably put together, packed it together, said, son, when you go there, I want you to have something to eat because it's going to be a long day. He gave it willingly, cheerfully, immediately. For you to receive your miracle today, you're going to have to give up your doubts Give up your fears, give up your anxieties, lay them at the feet of Jesus and believe that what he says in his word he will do to heal your body, to set you free. It's a dare to believe God for what he says in his word. It's a dare to have faith, to have God do a miracle in your life. There's something courageous and bold and fearless about coming and saying, Lord, Here I am. Do your work, whatever it is. Do your work in my life. Number four, you expect God to do it. When you walk up here, you have no doubts. You have no doubts whatsoever. You know that God is going to do a miracle in your life. This is the time when I give to Jesus everything I have and believe that he's going to multiply it in my life. If you notice in Mark chapter 6 verse 42, it says they all ate, all of the thousands of people ate. They were all satisfied. They were filled. The disciples still picked up 12 basketfuls of fragments of fish and bread that were left over. Sounds impossible. But it happened. God, in the same way, is wanting to do the impossible in this house today. Some of you may have the report, cancer. Some of you may have the report, you've got congestive heart failure. Some of you may have had the report, need a hip replacement, knee replacement. Some of you may have a report today that your marriage is in trouble, your finances down the drain. But I want you to know the God of miracles is in the house today. And he does what no other person can do. And he multiplies that which no other person can multiply. He can bring the unexpected into your life. You can go home. And tomorrow comes a check in the mail you didn't expect. Somebody, somebody just told me that. Somebody just told me they, they had a need in their life. Couldn't, couldn't pay it. And a $1,000 check came the next day. The next day, they, they had a payment they had to make. They, they, a $1,000 check come to help them with their problem. You say, oh, that's impossible. Yes, it's impossible. But God is the God of the impossible. And he makes that which is impossible possible in your life. God knows the miracle that you need today in your life. Here's the good thing about Jesus. 
In Matthew 9, 36, it says he was moved with compassion on them. Matthew 18, 27, he was moved with compassion and he loosed the man from satanic bondage. Matthew 20, 34, Jesus had compassion on them and he touched them. Mark 1, 41, Jesus moved with compassion and put forth his hand. Mark 8, 2, Jesus had compassion for the people. We're going to pray for you this morning. But before we pray for you, I want the brethren that are going to serve communion, I want you to bring it now. We're going to come and we're going to take communion together. We're going to believe God for miracles in your life. But before we do, I want to present to you the one that says, remember me. This morning we're going to take the cup, we're going to take the bread. When you take that cup and you take that bread, you do it knowing that Jesus Christ shed his blood for the salvation of every person in this room. The greatest miracle that could happen today is someone gets saved. Jesus comes into your life. You may have been sitting here for years. Never been moved by the Holy Spirit. Never sensitive to what God wants to do to change your life. But today, 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 in this miracle service, Jesus comes to save you, to change you, to give you new hope, to bring joy into your life. Some of you are going to take up the bread in a moment. When you take up the bread, I want all of you to look at it when you receive it. What you're going to see is markings in that bread. There are going to be stripes. There's going to be little holes. And that matzo bread, the stripes that were put upon his back, for by his stripes we are healed. You were, you were pierced, bruised for our transgressions, for our healings, for our hope in life. Brother, I want you, brothers and sisters, I want you to come and pass the communion, would you? When you receive it, I want you to begin to believe. Say, Lord, thank you for my miracle today. Thank you. My life is going to change today. Today. My life is going to change. You need to expect God to do it. When you take it, just bow your heads for a moment. We'll take together. Just bow your head and say, Lord, I'm ready for my miracle ready for my life to change. And he can only bring that miracle if you want that miracle.
any area that's not received the communion, you're waiting yet, just raise your hand if you haven't. Once not received communion. Receive communion, the elements. Well, Father, we thank you for, for the cross. Because at the cross, you made the impossible become possible. By your blood, you provided forgiveness for all sins, past, present, future. You took the penalty that was due us and paid it in full. And then upon your back, you took the stripes took the nails through hands and feet, pierced. So today we come in remembrance. For Lord, this morning, in partaking of this communion, we open the door for the miracle you're going to do in our life. So we come to remember, and we thank you for it. Take the bread this morning, would you? Lift it up. Take one look at it. <laughs> you want just lift it up into the light. You can see the piercing. You can see the stripes that were provided for your healing today. Let's eat together. Thank you for the blood. <laughs> Not a person in this room needs to live with the guilt of sin anymore. Not, not, not one person. I'm not guilty. The guilt is gone. <laughs> the shame is over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got a new life. One day I'm going to have a new home because of you, Jesus. So this morning we take this cup and we remember your death. Let's partake together. Now I'm going to ask those that are were asked to pray. I want you to come real quick like just line up across the front of the sanctuary. Come real quickly. Come on. Okay. If you if you want to be prayed for, I'm gonna have you just step back just a little bit. There you go. We've 
got space down here. Come on down. Now, if you need a miracle in your life today, God's going to do a miracle. I want you to expect a miracle. Don't walk, don't walk up there with doubt and say, I don't know if that's going to happen. It's going to happen because that's the God that you serve. And you expect it today. And when they lay their hands on you, when they anoint you with oil, you expect that whatever it is in your life that you want healed and chained happen today. Today. Cancer gone. Financial problems gone. Marriage put back together. All that, that that the enemy has been binding me up with, gone today in the name of Jesus. Come on. You need a healing? Come on. Come on. Come on up. And these folks are going to pray for you right now. Come on. Get all your seats. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come expecting that God is going to do a miracle today. God is going to do a miracle in your life today. 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 Not tomorrow. Today. Today. Today is the day of your miracle. Diabetes is going to be gone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Cancer is going to be gone in the name of Jesus. Energy is going to come back into your body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Miracles are going to happen in this house today. 